she used to be an actress. She ever do anything I would have seen? I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. What's a pilot? Well, you know, the show's on TV. I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you're aware there's an invention called television, and on that invention they show shows. Yeah. Well, the way they pick the shows on TV is they make one show, and that show is called a pilot. And they show that one show to people who pick the shows, and on the strength of that one show, they decide if they want to make more shows. Some get accepted and become TV programs, and some don't, and become nothing. She started one of those, one of the ones that became nothing. Not bad. Not bad at all. Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. It's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, and with me is the man with over 100 adventures under his belt. It's Captain Philip Press. Sure, good evening. I love you. I love you, too. Well, thank you. I like to, I haven't talked about that in a long time. The, the adventure it's, it's list. It's always in there. It's always kind there of There was a cartoon based off me, Adventure Time. That show was based on. That was mm. really successful. So yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't see a dime of it. How, how can it be based? Did they change it just enough? Yeah, they. It's changed. like when uh, Vanilla Ice changed under pressure just that little bit for yep. Ice Ice Baby. Yep, there's two <laughs> notes that are different on each one of those episodes. So if you've ever seen that cartoon, <clears throat> yes, pardon me, I'm new at this. I have seen it. Um, with it, by the end of the episode, they don't ever show up. But there's the sex scene is always at the end. And so that's See, always, I've never seen a full episode. Yeah, and so well, they don't they cut it off and they do the credits before the sex scene. So, so I, like they, the whole they, they didn't show have to pay me. Is almost like a build up to how to the characters having sex. They cut it off, but the path they take during the show is similar to a path. Exactly you took. liked it. Exactly. Oh, I had no idea, and, yeah. and and that was a really lucky guess. <laughs> well, you'd think I'd have a lot more money. I would think that, but uh, again, they cut it off right before my sex scenes. Sometimes, but not mine. Uh, I mean, I. I it wasn't the cartoon sex. It I, was, I would think that you. I did the have, real sex. You did the real sex. Yeah, so which you, was interpreted by <laughs> Hanna Barbera or whoever did it. It was a Hanna Barbera cartoon. I think we all know. <laughs> I, play, I played Yogi Bear. They, I was gonna say they recycled a lot of boo boo footage. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used to call it. My dick boo boo. Really? Yeah. Man. Hey boo boo. Yeah. I, your hairline. She's got red hair. We've talked about how you could set a clock to your hairline. You, mm-hmm. You're 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 getting so old. It's 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 tough to look at you anywhere except your hairline. It's so perfect. I would think that you would have a lot more money because guy people who look better and better as they age seem to have a lot of money. But it's just my hair. Like, it is just from, the hair. from my eyebrows down. Yeah. I look old. Like as soon as you hit my eye sockets, it's I looks... would I would even say hairline down. Really, hairline up, awesome. Right directly under the hairline down. Eh. Yeah, eh. It, it needs it needs some work. Eh. Um, yeah, I just got a haircut. So I, I, it, what they call that? A, I got a. Fresh, a tight cut. You always, you're, you're, you're always six days away from a tight haircut. I think. You know, you know who always has uh, super tight cuts? Who? Who? Indeed, Hoover Boss. That guy gets cuts er day, like On the he's rigs. the goddamn president of the United States. Man, remember those guys? Yeah. What they say? Uh, Love sit alone in a buggy marsh, totally motionless except for her heart. Yeah, they <clears> did. They <throat> did sing that. Yeah. And peaches for me. There, that's that's a good one too. Hey, I got a. Uh, we have a guest today. Yeah, and I, 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 you suggested and I scheduled it. Kind of, and I can't wait to dig into it. I'm very excited. Go ahead and you, announce the guest, would you please? Oh, this is my fraternity brother. Um, we've known each other for, I don't know, two years now. Yeah, give or take. I went to his house once. He let me come to his house, which was pretty cool. And uh, we're, we're Moose Buddies, so we're Fraternity Brothers. Welcome to the show, my buddy Joe. Thank you very much. You can talk now. You can, you can talk was, whatever you want to now. I wasn't sure. No. I figured you'd have me muted. No. Oh, I, I, <laughs> if I really knew what I was doing, I probably, you know, that's what you should do before somebody. But no. Welcome. Thank you for the invite. No problem. It was easy. It is easy. It, it is easy, right? As difficult as I feel like we make so many of these things that we do, 
It is pretty easy. It's super simple. You know what I say? I get frustrated about, like, I ask people to come on, and they cancel, or they, they just say, no, I don't want to do it. Most of the time, I just ask, and they say yes, and it's easy. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think today was real easy getting Joe on the show. Super easy. I waited until he'd had for four or five beers, and I said, hey... What are you doing on such a date? You want to make a mistake? And he said, <laughs> <laughs> you want to ruin your life? Come over to my house. A lot of whiskey beforehand. Yeah. Oh, he loved What kind of whiskey do you drink? Multiple kinds. A buddy of mine started drinking um, Kroger brand. I think it's Kroger brand, but it's called like Four Freedoms Whiskey. Have you heard of that? I have heard of that. Have you? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I've never had it, uh, fortunately. But yeah. uh, I do know that uh, my, so my nephew is a big whiskey connoisseur and happens to live right across the street so Ooh. Uh, he tells me all about the whiskeys but i usually forget by the time i get back home <laughs> now i don't blake and i recently talked about our our chest hair situation which is uh <laughs> dire it's not good uh, but as a whiskey drinker yourself do you have do you you have a hairy chest it, put, it puts hair on your chest I, wow, that's why dad that. always said my dad said eat onions <clears throat> and, and you have a big old glass of whiskey and it'll put hair on your chest man i got half of that right <laughs> you well, you can't eat onion rings without having a intestinal dissatisfaction. Yeah, it's uh, onions, not funions. Bro, <laughs> ooh, I guess, see, I, that's I can't eat a funion, but I can eat an onion. I like a funion. Yeah. So, Joe, you uh, you've never listened to the show before? No. Good. Okay. All right. So that makes it more fun. Um, and so I was like, hey, at the drawing, I was like, hey, what are you doing? Uh, such such night. And he's like, you're like eh, nothing. You're, why? I think you did say why first, <clears throat> you know, and uh, I asked you to be on the show, and you're like, yes, yes, I'm in. There's a lot more, a lot bigger pause there in between that. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I wanted to seem like you were a little anxious about doing it, and then uh, when the day came, I said, hey, we're not going to do it. Yeah, you, can't, you canceled on us. I canceled on us. You said you had some bad ham. Well, okay, here's the situation. The only thing that I ate at my mother-in-law's house mm. was one... Ham, like, uh, like a slider, yeah, like a slider because right. uh, they decided it was going to be a, a cold food Easter, and so they have his pasta salads and mm-hmm. potato salads and stuff. Yeah. And of course, I'm not going to eat that, there's yeah. no way. If it doesn't end or begin with chicken and end with finger, you're not going to eat it, right? Or, yeah, and so I do believe that had something to do with it. I do believe my, her, my, my wife and my mother in law were in, in conspired because they gave me <laughs> my portion. Yeah. Nobody else got sick. This, this is his narcissism, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> like they're it's out all... to get me. Uh, remember when Jesus came out of the? He came at, back to oh, life. Well, I that's mean, the day they're going to come at me. That's I, what. That's what Blake's. <laughs> I could understand. He he is his tummy was probably when he was in Christ. That, yeah, when he was in that cave. Oh, his, he was probably just like, oh god, this Maybe. is horrible. Yeah. So I I and, and then, yeah. So then yeah. So I I just I didn't go to work or anything. You I, I didn't feel good. But I Joe can't. was flexible, thankfully. Are, are physically in life, are you flexible, like with your body? A lot of body questions about Joe today. <laughs> I, no comment, but uh, ironically, for as old as I am, I am fairly flexible, if you ask my wife. Ooh, nice. And we will. Can we bring her in? <laughs> um, you guys know each other solely from uh, being at the Moose together, is that correct? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. And he, I went over to his house one night and hung out. Well, he didn't just appear there and say, hey, why Well, he invited in? me. I know, I... but like, but you met at the Moose. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, prior. <laughs> So, um, how long have you been a member of the Moose? Because Blake's been there for a few years now, and when he goes, when he does something, Blake is a hundred percent in until he starts to lose passion. You'll see. Uh, he's definitely hundred percent in right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, a little, maybe a little more than that on some nights. <laughs> uh, 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 so, what is it? It was probably I'm going to say ten years ago that I joined the Moose, and I was there for a year, two years, maybe. Not as not as frequent as what I do now, mm-hmm. but. Uh, we let it go for a while, and I've been there for about a year and a half, I think, hmm. roughly. Right, how how involved are you? Do you ever get a job there? Are you part no. of the the board or what have no, you? No, no, not at all. Just a member. Just to go get, get some booze most of the time. That's pretty good. And yeah. and donate a lot of money for, at the draw. Really? Yeah. Oh, at the drawing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you ever? Every Thursday, you guys have a drawing. And right. If you, if your ticket gets pulled, you have a chance to pull a tab and win uh, varying degrees or varying amounts of money. Hopefully, the the ten thousand dollar purse. Right. Right. Have you ever won any money at the Moose all these years? Yes, I have. Actually, I've uh, well, it, within twelve months, I think I won the fifty fifty four times. Yeah. All right. Before you give us the amount, you don't have to give us the amount if you want. I, we will say that this after we're done recording tonight, it does go to the IRS. So keep that, <laughs> so keep that in mind. It wasn't that much. Well, I spent more than what I've won. I will yeah, say that. Yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 
It's probably yeah. I, I was probably pushing a thousand dollars out of Ooh. the out of the year. It's, they yeah. were they were around three hundred three hundred or so. There was one of them that was four hundred, I think, or close Nothing to, to it. shake a stick at. And now they're good. they're they're large in charge right now. Yeah. As as of this recording, there's only four five numbers left mm-hmm. on one card, and our fifty fifties are averaging about five hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I'm always glad to have a new guest here. I know you love it, but I will say this: <laughs> a few months ago, we had a couple guys on the show. A guy named Wayne. And remember Wayne? Yeah. And R- Wayne, he, he brought a guy named Joe, right? Oh, okay, yeah. And I said, Blake, why don't you ask Wayne and Joe if they want to be on the show again? And, oh. And, I- and uh, yeah, see, Blake is, he's so checked out. No. <laughs> so, but he, he asked a different Joe, which I'm glad to have, because it's always nice to have new guests on. But, like, I came here expecting to see a different guy. <laughs> And uh, but I don't think you know the other guys. You know no, Wayne I know, better. I know, yeah, yeah. No, I know Wayne. And he was well. That's why I told you. I said Wayne wasn't there because I was going to ask you. Yeah. I thought you were talking about you. But I how would Wayne. I? I never met Joe though before. But I thought you'd met him before when you were at the Moose. Okay. No, I don't think. Have I, we had me at the Moose, did we? I, I think. I think I, you. Yeah, probably maybe. Probably. maybe we did. I don't. I was, apologize. Was I drinking? Was I? If drinking? I was at the Moose, I was. I mean, same. So <laughs> we but we put, we could have met each other in a drunken stupor. But um, no, I was. <laughs> it was really funny because. Blake asks a guy I've never met to be on the show, which is fine. I'm I'm glad to have him. If Blake vouches for a guy, he's in. So um, my I guess my question to you is: Did you know that Blake did a, a podcast? I did know that. Yeah. Yes. And do you go around touting that a lot? Oh, no, not not. I don't. I to people that would understand the word podcast. I mean, there's a lot of people at the Moose. If you said podcast, they would have no idea. They're 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 not in sync with technology. Mm, like like downloading an app to control your TV, that kind of thing. <laughs> So ironically, I don't know if that's a, if that's the same Wayne I know, and I don't want to mention last names on here, but uh, I'm assuming it's probably the same Wayne that, yeah. that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he was yeah when you were over at the house, he was going to be on this podcast that yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so. What, what did you think about the show when he said would you would you like to be on? Uh, how how did he tell you that he does a podcast, which all white men apparently do have podcasts at some, at some point? And uh, what what were your what were your thoughts on it? If I could ask you. So so I, I, that's a. I don't even know how to answer that. I can remember it's. It was a while back that you sure. mentioned it to me that there was a podcast, yeah. and I was. I was like, I thought, well, well that's, that's. I think it was that's at cool. your. It was at your house. We were talking about it because Wayne was talking about being on and everything, and we well, were. Well, I, I, I yeah. knew before that you told me that beforehand. Yeah. I knew yeah. you had a podcast mm-hmm. yeah. uh, prior to that. It makes me sound super cool, and so it, like when I meet it did. Co- it does? when I meet cool when I meet cool dudes and want to hang out, I'm like, hey, I, I do a podcast. And I'm like, oh wow. See that I've had the adverse effect of that. If I oh, t- you, oh, you don't say it to women. You just oh, you just tell guys. Well, there don't, you go. If you tell a woman that you have a podcast, she instantly like is like, no. <laughs> a lot of time I'll go. You're to not like going. A, I'll go when I, I go to a Kroger. I'm looking for a bottle of uh, Four Freedoms whiskey, you know. And I start. Ta- I come up to women <laughs> and I say, hey, uh, how you doing? You like whiskey? I got a bottle. And she says, no. I said, well, I do a podcast. And then she leaves. <laughs> so you say I should be going up to guys and saying that. <laughs> well, for, not for the same reason, but yeah. So, but all in all, I, I, I scheduled a guest and I, we're excited to have Joe. I like it. I'm very, yeah, I'm very yeah, excited to have Joe. Me and Joe, he has, a, he has a handshake that'll fucking crush your hand. Oh, I thought you meant like a secret handshake. No, no, no. Every time he, every time he gives me a handshake, which is great, we see each other, hey. Yeah. But I cannot match his intensity level or muscle level. Only weak guys think that. Is it, is it an alpha male thing? <laughs> no, no. no. It's, 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 a, it's just a handshake. That's all it is. <laughs> Remember in the 80s when they had those things? It was like two plastic pieces with uh, springs in the middle. And guys yeah. would like go like they move their hand <clears throat> together like this to like strengthen their grip. Right. Does, does that play a role in your I mean, life, Joe? I, no, it does not. <laughs> I probably should have done that. No. Yeah. I have weak hands. Yeah. But you just always, goes, yeah. it just always goes back to, you know, it actually goes back to my father teaching me when when you're young and as you're growing up to be a man, mm-hmm. you know, to always look at look uh, another fellow in the eye right. and, and give him a firm handshake. Right. It's, yeah. it's just firm. And I always try to base it off the other guy's handshake. Why don't you not make it so hard <laughs> I, when you do? I, I, I take it easy on you. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. I definitely don't crush guys' hands when I shake. I, I give. I give them a firm shake. But um, I, what's always funny to me, and I, th- I think you mainly find this with ladies, like when you go to shake a lady's hand, it's basically like their hand faints in your hand. It's like you have to support it, and you, you almost have to ask, "I'm going to let go of the hand. Is it okay if I do that? Are you okay? Are you going to fall over? Are you depending on me to stand up?" But you guys have had that before, right? Where, uh, where you shake a hand, it just feels like limp and wet. Joe's like, "Yeah, when I shake Blake's hand." <laughs> I was wondering why his palm was down when he went to shake my hand. <laughs> Usually people bend and kiss the ring. <laughs> right. 
That's, I always forget I don't have the ring. You gotta get the you gotta keep the ring on. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> Does Molly know you take the ring off? Oh, I, I haven't worn a wedding ring in a long time. Why is that? Well, because when I when I was when I was welding, I didn't have one. I didn't wear one. You used to work with a welding robot. Oh yeah, welding robot. But yeah. I, I say welding. But it was, oh, it, it, is, was, yeah, it yeah. was a robot. Sounds it, much cooler. A robot did it. <laughs> I, I, just... I thought the robot sounded pretty cool because one time you got a laser beam that shot him in the head. Right? Did you get laser beamed in the head? That once? explains so much. Right. <laughs> Uh, it, it zapped the part of the head that has firm handshakes. <laughs> but I, I quit wearing one, so for like two and a half, three years, I didn't wear one. And then when I went into the office, I tried to put mine on, and it didn't fit anymore. So I was like, eh. She doesn't wear hers anymore, either. Are you guys sending a message to uh, like people at the, at, the, at the grocery store when you go buy whiskey? Are you sending messages to people with your lack of rings? I'm like, uh, hello, <laughs> ladies. Joe, are you a married guy? I am a married guy. How long have you been married? Uh, 23 years. Oh, man. So uh, that's more than all of Blake's marriages combined. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and I guess my next... We do ask people this from time to time that have been married a long time. And I think Scott is our closest. Big E. Yeah. He's our closest example of one of our, our close buddies that has been married for a long time. But what, what's the secret, Joe, to staying married for uh, over two decades? Better not be whiskey again. It's, uh, it has a lot to do with it. <laughs> I can... I can you, you know, I... You know, I'd, I don't, it's hard to give uh, give advice. I don't know. I don't look at myself as one of those advice guys. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's just uh, we, Blake and I are actually yeah. talking a little bit about this in the garage before you showed up. Okay. And uh, you know, it's just, it's just understanding, letting go of the the little things, mm-hmm. and paying attention to the big things. I think maybe. Okay. I I always think about uh, chocolates and flowers. What about you, Blake? <laughs> I don't think about chocolate or flowers. <laughs> Massive compromises, I just, that's what I, I think. I just think about surviving. Yeah. And I shouldn't be in survival mode. Blake, you, you... Blake's got a Bear Grylls type of mindset when it comes to marriage. <laughs> F- funny thing is, you know, you talk about the the chocolates and the flowers stuff, and my wife and I very rarely get each other gifts, even for for holidays, birthdays, right. even even anniversaries. We have forgotten our anniversary more than we've remembered. Oh, really? It. Yeah, we, the, we'll be we'll be laying in bed in the morning on our anniversary, not even knowing it. And my daughter will text, "Hey, happy anniversary!" And I'll look over, and it's always a competition: who can say happy anniversary the first? Who remembers the <laughs> right. first first time every year? It sounds like it's it's funny now, and that you should keep up the tradition of forgetting. <laughs> it, it, just, I, it just means how blissful it is that, that that they don't look at one day that they celebrate their true. love. They celebrate it every goddamn day. We do. Absolutely. Is that yeah. what you do with your marriage, Blake? Do you celebrate it every day? I try. Yeah. And every day she's like, I, I don't want to be doing this. Oh, no. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I've been trying, Joe, to trick a lady into marrying me for a long time, and uh, <laughs> I can't seem to do it. And I, I think it's uh, too much chocolate is what it is. Is there a specific one you're trying to trick? No, just anyone that'll have me. <laughs> That's not true. Tell, tell Joe the truth. You don't. No, want, I'm, I'm going to lie to Joe the rest of the show. You don't want to get married. You don't. Well, want I'm, to... don't blow my cover when I'm trying to lie to a guy. <laughs> hey, I'm always about honesty. You're, you're, On this podcast, you're it's about honesty, about, right? Yeah. And you're always about respect for women too. Oh right? yeah, for sure. No, it's good to have a new guest on the show, and uh, it's it's Blake is. Uh, He's, he's farmed this whole community of, of uh, a social network at the Moose. He's got all these friends. And um, I, I was always curious, because he would, he would come in and say, I joined the Moose. It's like, oh, that's interesting. And then week after week, he say, I'm, I'm, I'm a bartender now. I'm doing this at the Moose. So, was, so I go into the Moose with him. I think it was on his birthday a few years ago. And we walk in the door. And like it's goddamn NBC 1984 on Cheers. Everyone turns and says, hey, Blake. And I was like, okay, this is why he wants to hear it. <laughs> This is why he likes it. This is the only place where everyone, everybody in the room is happy to see him. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say Blake does make it entertaining, very entertaining every week. Some weeks more than others, but uh, it's very entertaining every week. And I can tell you when he's not there on a Thursday night, uh, it's not the same thing there. It, it's not a, the, the energy's not there as what it would be if he was there. And I know my wife gets so irritated. She did, if if we weren't down to the five slots and you right. weren't there one day, we would not be there. <laughs> that, thank you very much. That, I think I've only... Very I, I, too, am actually a member of the Moose. I think it was briefly mentioned before. And I've been to the drawing night, which we mentioned is Thursday, once or twice. And for whatever reasons, I don't think Blake was was doing the announcing either this time. Was, this was before I, I got really into one, announcing. Once before, and then I went once when, for some reason, you weren't there. Oh, I had a bowl that night, yeah. And so, um, but just the other day, and I never see these things, someone on Facebook, uh, I'm only on Facebook for Facebook Marketplace, 
Someone sent me a video <laughs> of Blake doing the announcing. Someone had recorded you doing your announcing, and I got to see Blake in his element. Yeah. And he, he he really does light up, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. It's where he's meant to be. <laughs> it's beer. It's Much like, more than a podcast. Beer is <laughs> right. the confidence and I'm microphone. just going to start calling jackpot numbers. <laughs> Fuck this podcast. Anything more. that Blake can hold in his hand like a cock <laughs> like that, that gives him yeah. uh, confidence, whether it's a beer or a microphone. I do enjoy it. And, and it's, it's the crowd is big, really, really big right now. And the only thing about it that I don't like is there's a lot of people that haven't been coming for a long time that only show up and... Where I used to get a really good, really awesome crowd participation, it's drowned it out now. Those people are still, but it's drowned it out by all these people who don't know what's going on or kind of refuse to have fun with it. Yeah, yeah. They're there. So how is it getting drowned out? Then are they, are they just talking amongst themselves? Or? Well, yeah. There's. I mean, yeah. Basically. <clears throat> This is just your need to have like complete attention on you on the room. No, I don't. No, yeah. I don't think so. I think that I just it was it 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 seemed to be more entertaining when it was a group of people that every week did it. They knew what to do next, and they do. You know, it was just. And so now you have a lot of people that are just money grubbing assholes that are only there. But they are members of the moose, right? Oh yeah, I know. I, money grubbing but I, I see what I see where he's coming from because there's almost rituals there. You know, one one that always I always get a kick out of is and and it is drowned out now that there's a bigger crowd is. When when somebody draws and they lose, mm-hmm. everybody always does the oh, and then it's yay, right? So <laughs> you got to give them the all first that they lost, but then you're happy because they lost because <laughs> it, ne- it gives it to the next week. I'm actually really glad we're talking about this because I don't know these rituals, and I, and I would be one of the assholes who just shows up <laughs> late in the game. I, I totally am because I don't go to the moose a ton. I live in East Peoria. It's a haul for me to go all the way to the moose. Understood. What I what I think though. Since this is a problem I'm just learning about, there is a solution to this. And since you're announcing, and you, you do a great job from the video I saw, Blake. Thank you. I didn't know there, I didn't know there was a video on it. Someone did, took up like an eight-minute video. It was, I, it was I actually it. on the Moose page, I think. Oh, oh is that okay. Yeah. But I think since you're doing the announcing, Joe, I think you need to step up with <laughs> some like uh, cue cards for the audience to say <laughs> aw or cheer her right. You need to stand kind of – you sit behind Blake, uh, and then when, when the appropriate card comes up, you just hold it up so the car, so the crowd knows how to react. That's a brilliant idea. Yes. Well, I'm very smart. Um, <laughs> anything else we should talk about with Joe here? <coughs> no, let's, let's let's get into why he's here. All right, let's do it. We're going we're gonna to move the show along. That was our banter section, Joe. Great banter, Joe. Did you enjoy the banter? I'm still enjoying it. Okay, all right. Oh, I was talking over that. Can you play it again so we can hear it? Yeah, I'd love to. This is my favorite part. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Uh, you know brilliant. That, you know who that was? Brilliant. Couch pilots. Safety brilliant. first. We're very, very smart, Joe. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> did, <laughs> did you know whose voice that was, by the way? I do not. Blake's? That's his wife's. <laughs> oh. But I don't even know if they're married anymore. She doesn't wear the <laughs> ring. And every time I hear that... I start thinking about and approaching her and telling her I'm on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Today we discussed the Just pilot. Just it all. Right? Right. Yeah. Today we discussed the pilot episode of Adventures of Nick Carter from the year of our Lord 1900 ad 72. Now that was a great year. 1972. Um, it was the best year. Was it the best year? Absolutely. What best do you remember? Year. Being born. Ooh. Oh, nice. So he was born this year. I was negative three. You were negative nine. Right. So, Whoa. Joe, you're winning right now. <laughs> you're winning by age. So, it's, marriage it's, too. Apparently, you don't have to give us specifics <laughs> if you don't want to. But, but have you had your birthday yet this year? I have. So, so you just turned fifty. I did. And how did that go? How did you celebrate? Or did you uh, forget until your daughter sent you a text? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do that frequently. Uh, no, it was, it was nothing big. We just had, well, Blake's been around, so we just had a little get together with friends and family. Mm-hmm. Blake wasn't there, yeah. right? You don't want Blake No, at the no party, he was not. No. But I was celebrating on, on Jackpot. We had a good time. Night. On the Jackpot night, we celebrated. Oh, you guys made birthday. a deal out of it there, oh, too? We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. great. Well, yeah. happy, happy belated birthday to you. Thank you very much. 50 is a milestone, the half century mark. Do you feel wise? No, I do not. <laughs> How do you spell wise? I spell it W H I S E. It sounded like it the way you pronounced it. <laughs> whip, whipped cream. Yeah, that's right. I tell you what. Cool whip. Cool whip. That's I, right. I think um, Aaliyah had it right when she said age ain't nothing but a number. What do you think, Joe? Agree. Yeah. You it's never get older in your mind, but the uh, the body starts feeling it. Some of the uh, some people I know and I've worked with in the past too, they'd be like in their seventies, oddly enough, and they still act fairly immature. It's nothing but a number. It's a mindset, isn't it? It is, absolutely. You've been around 50 years now. You've probably met people that are like your age or older, and you're like, why are you acting like a baby? 
What the hell's wrong with you? He said that to me in the garage, but he shook my hand. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you shake my hand like a baby. No, he, he's like, why are you acting like a baby? <laughs> That's their age they're acting. Yeah. That also oh, it comes back to the handshake. Yeah. You can tell <laughs> it does. you can tell someone's oh. mind age by their handshake. Oh, that's brilliant. It's more by the cry. More by the cry. <laughs> How mine, did... mine was more of a whimper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blake, nineteen seventy two. Am I right? Yes. Let's go back there. In, in our, our minds. minds. We have things we do on this show right now. Is, is that in stereo? Yeah. <laughs> no mono for this show. <laughs> You can hear it's on the left and the right. We'll talk about some things that happened in 1972, so we can be in the proper mind frame of when this pilot was uh, created, because to do it any other way would be uncivilized. Yeah, um, we have things now in 2022 that we didn't have in 1972. And when I forgot to tell Joe about this, but when he's watching it, he need to he he couldn't base it off what he sees. Now he could, but I don't think it would be fair. No, it wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair to the, to the actors and, and the director because in 1972, if you think about it, we um, did not have formaldehyde. Okay, right. that, that was one of the things we did not. <laughs> no have. way to preserve the dead. Right. They just they used uh, like the socks. Three days later, you go to pay your respects at a funeral home. It's just a pile of goo. Right. Um, we did not have. Um, um, Oh. There is something else. I can't. What is that? I can't remember. We didn't have band aids. That's what it was. We didn't have band aids. No way to pr- like, safely protect your open wounds. When, when when Joe, when you were born, you probably don't remember this, but you didn't. There was no such thing as a band aid back then. So if you would have got a, as a child, if you would have got a cut on your hand, yeah. you just had to spit on some dirt and uh, put it in there. No, they used to put that uh, red stuff on you. Mm-hmm. That, iodine that burned like hell. Iodine. Ooh, iodine. So they had that. That was going to be like, <clears throat> but they had right. That. They had it, but they didn't <clears throat> have band aids. And then in 1972, we didn't have the Toronto Blue Jays. And I mean, so that's you, true. You can't look at this pilot that we watched and and base it off of today's standards. It's so right. it's, it's, it's it's such a different world. I love the Toronto Blue Jays, by the way. Oh, I loved them. They're an invasive species. Joke. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, speaking of Blue Jays, uh, the other day, Molly uh, uh, is in the kitchen. She goes, oh, my God. So I kind of get up and go, what, what, what's going on? There's a Blue Jay out there. And I looked out there, and that son of a bitch was just squawking and everything. I'm like, get him out of here. <laughs> Who was that, Joe Carter? <laughs> hey that was a that was a joke. Thank you. All right, pretty good joke. Oh, yeah. he, played, he played for the Blue Jays. Give him credit. I believe you. Okay. And I, I'm going to guess he played for the Blue Jays in the 1980s. <clears throat> yep. That's where all of Blake's MLB knowledge comes from. Right. And only, understandably so. Yeah. It's the only time I watched baseball. I have a very near, like uh, 95 to 98. I have a, 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 a very low understanding of the NBA, and that's it. Yeah. Anyway. Let's talk about some things that did happen in 1972. May 15th, Okinawa is returned to Japan after 27 years of United States occupation. <clears throat> Do we just like like tie a bunch of boats to it and take it over there? Yeah, because the way you read it, it seems like we like gave it back to them. Like we had to like deliver it. Well, it's it's like um, you hear like Great Britain had all these territories all over the world, and you're like 1964, they gave Australia to Australia. Like Jesus Christ, it wasn't until the 60s that Australia <laughs> became Australia. It's shit like that where it's like the United States occupied Okinawa. I, I assume it's a you know leftover from a World War II events. Sure. But, uh, yeah, we gave it back to Japan. Man, we were nice people. Yeah. You're, how you ever do any uh, international traveling, Joe? I do. I, well, just <laughs> just recently over the last few years. <clears throat> well, I guess, I guess once back in... Uh, I, I always tell the story back in uh, when I was 29 years old. It was the first time I flew, first time I've ever seen the ocean, and first time I was ever out of the country all in one trip. Where'd Ooh. you go? We went to Cancun, Mexico. Oh, nice. Uh, some friends of ours wound up getting a really good deal on some flights, and they said, hey, I th- think we can get you in on there. Hell yeah. So we Put did your, it. Fill your suitcases <laughs> with this bags. <laughs> it won't cost nothing to get over there. And we couldn't afford to do it for quite a few more years, and for the last few years, uh, we've gone in, back to that area. We are similar, you know, within... Within you know a couple hundred miles, of that going to Mexico. So the the so. first trip was when you, how old were you? Twenty nine. Twenty nine. So this was like, this is like this is like for you right at nine eleven. Yeah. Were you flying on nine eleven? No, not nine eleven. Oh, it would have been. God. It would have been. It would have been after that. It was a national there. tragedy. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. It was, yep. <clears throat> I uh, I think I'm I'm trying to think, and I was probably around the same age the first time I ever flew, and first time I saw the ocean when I when me and Carrie Ann. Went on our honeymoon. That's the first time I'd ever been in an airplane. Yeah. And we went to Cozumel. 
Mm. And that was the first time I'd ever uh, been in the ocean. Did you guys both stay near like resorts or did you guys venture off resorts when you were at these places? <clears throat> we, I, we went to a resort. Yeah. Ironically, my first trip there when I was 29, we went to a resort and uh, the other couple we went, went with, the, the guy that was there, uh, himself and myself would leave almost daily to go do adventures. My wife for the entire week never left the resort. There's five pools, four bars, and yeah. she never left the resort. Does she look and back was... now and think, man, I wish I would have uh, gone and done something else? She's like, no, I, I love what I did, and I stand by it. <laughs> she, she loves it. Even even to this day, we, we always hit the resort. Speaking of Cozumel, we were there uh, right right across the uh, uh, the Gulf from Cozumel, okay. where we yeah. stayed, our resort. We, we took the boat over Cozumel. Oh, we, we 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 weren't at a resort. We were on a on a cruise ship. My fault. Okay. My fault. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So but that's kind of like that. You're, you're, it's a res, it's a resort on water. Exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. So yeah, okay. I, I I I liked it down there. I mean, I'm not a very good swimmer. I think you get outside of um, the resort area, things get weird, and, mm. and you're going there for a vacation. You're going for experience. Yeah. I mean, hang out at the resort. Yeah. You yeah. know, drink your margaritas. Have a great. Well, time. we had those like that day trip. You know, where you're going through, and it's you know, it's it's just I don't do well with like uh, people selling stuff and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So that part of it, you I give yeah. in. No, I just feel uncomfortable. I just feel uncomfortable. I don't. I don't know. I'm not a. I don't. I don't like to dicker. You don't dicker. <laughs> I'm not a dickerer. <laughs> but I also that I don't, probably explains the marriage problems. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't do well in large crowds. Explains a handshake. <laughs> yeah. Hey, May 24th, the Magnavox Odyssey video game system is first demoed, um, marking the dawn of the video game air age. It goes on sale to the public in August. I heard an awe. Like, re- were you remembering back to a time of, of early video I, game so consoles? I, I, my parents never bought any of that stuff for us. We never had any of that stuff, but I do remember yeah. Magnavox. Yes, I remember. Yeah, um, a lot of those early consoles had the games like built into it. You had like three to five games right, right on it, yeah. and maybe just like a little knob, and that's all it was. Yeah. You couldn't really dicker around with it too yeah. much. I, re- I remember uh, the first time I saw a remote for a video gaming console or whatever that I couldn't understand was mm-hmm. the Coleco one, ColecoVision. Mm-hmm. It was like a square, like long square, and there was a whole bunch of buttons, and then there was yeah. a knob at the top, and it just, it, 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 it seemed very like, this doesn't, feel right or anything like that and now i, I pick up like one of the, the the new xbox ones or something it's got 12 buttons on and it. i i'm like i i can't make my character move three feet and kick somebody <laughs> so you're always looking to kick people in games <laughs> i'm player. a kicker when it comes to games i'm a kicker he's playing a bowling game the other day he's like how do i kick the fucker next to me I like, this isn't don't, soccer yeah you, right. don't, you don't kick people at bowling ironically i've never ever played a soccer game I, uh, maybe maybe that's where i would excel in video games uh, there you go i don't play a lot of video games because i'm not good at them but maybe I need to get the FIFA game or something. And Soccer is almost kick exclusive. So I know. So you'd have a heyday, I think. Play shit, that. I'm on it. i got to write that shit down. <laughs> May 18th, four troopers of the British Special Air Force uh, Service and Special Boat Service are parachuted <laughs> onto the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II, 1,600 kilometers across the Atlantic after a bomb threat and ransom demand, which turned out to be bogus. Hmm? Oh, so these paratroopers came down and like took it, took it back over? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? You would think that those people that were that had hijacked it would like see them coming. That's a those 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 were big parachutes back yeah, in the day, yeah, right? Well, right. they said it was bogus. They made a burlap. I think maybe they did it at night. Oh, who knows? But can, can you imagine like parachute like <clears throat> being part of special forces and parachuting out of an aircraft onto a boat? That's, That's crazy. nuts. That's insane. Whew, I've never been on a cruise though in my life. You know what? Um, I very much enjoy the cruise. Mm-hmm. Until like we had to come home, and then like then they, they, they take the stabilizers down, and they go as fast as possible because they're like running late, and <laughs> you're just swaying back and forth. Like I mean, so most of the time on the ship, you're saying you can't feel the movement right, of the water. Right, because they have stabilizers, but then they're not because they're not going fast. You know, they're, they they yeah, they just along. They're just do do do. But they they always have you know they got a schedule to keep, and so when they're if they're you know they they put these stabilizers in. And the fucker, you're walking down the hall, and you're just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. See, I've always wanted to go on a cruise, and my wife will not go because she she was down in Florida once uh, for one of my daughter's cheerleading competitions, and they went out uh, out to the sea to a uh, casino, floating casino out mm. out in the out on the ocean, international and, waters, yep, international waters, yep, where it's legal, <laughs> and uh, 
she oh, she felt sick. She never she never threw up or anything, but she felt sick from it, and now she's scared to death of going on something like that. But, I, I was scared to <clears> death. Uh, the whole trip was fine until like the last like you know uh, twelve fifteen hours. You were scared to death to go on it. That that was your honeymoon, right? Yeah. You, you guys chose a destination that you were scared to death. I was. Of? I didn't choose it. It was. It was. It was purchased for us as a wedding gift. Oh. He already, I didn't. He already it. took the big leap. That's that's true. The second time, I, I didn't even want to. We we had the, the the excursion with the stingrays. Oh, that's cool. And they wanted me to get into the ocean. Oh yeah. And they want me to let all these stingrays. And, and I, I'm like, there's a famous, you know, animal like, guy. Like, I want to. I want to go the same way the crocodile hunter went. That's what you so, said. Right? But it was, it was really, you know. But then I realized, oh, these. Stingrays are here every day. They get fed every day. Mm-hmm. They this is their this is they're their docile. Their 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 lions <clears throat> jump. Their, their tigers jumping through a hoop. This is you know they're not going to come after me. So yeah, I, I wouldn't get into a pool with a tiger though. <clears throat> no, that's just me. Like uh, like this when I went to Mexico another time, um, and we went on a uh, snorkeling thing. I don't swim, Joe. I'm not a very good swimmer. He sinks. Neither am I. And I can swim, but I'm not great at I'm it. I'm not. I'm not graceful. Save my own life. Nobody else. Your yeah. hand is so strong and almost stone like. I think you would sink like that. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Goes right through water. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I was so scared of these stingrays because I don't maneuver well in the water. And then you would like you be you be you know snorkeling along, right? Yeah. And then there was just be this big huge area of like sting uh, not stingrays but uh, jellyfish. Oh mm-hmm. boy! And they're just floating. They're not moving hardly at all. And I'm moving my whole body trying to get away from them. And they're just right where they were. And they're just getting closer and closer. So yeah, you, you do live an exa- anxiety ridden life, don't you? Uh, yeah, people don't know that. But <laughs> I don't know. With Joe you- doesn't know that, but now he knows. Well, I'm not- constantly, I'm constantly in a state of anxiety. With Joe's uh, knowledge of your anxiety, I am safely and securely back in 1972. Good. Congratulations on being born, by the way. Yeah. You're already making me feel younger. You did, you did great. <laughs> the, way, the, way, the way Blake and I bicker like old men, we feel, make you feel young. Uh, hey, hey, Joe, uh, you watched Adventures of Nick Carter. There, there are three reasons why we watch it here on Couch Buys. Three reasons why we choose any pilot to watch. What do you think those three reasons are? Um... So, I, I may be privy to some of this. Back from previous conversations with Blake years ago, I could probably answer one. The one that they didn't make it really big. We'll take it. We'll take it. Yeah. We'll take it. <clears throat> um, yeah, now the other ones I'm going to have to guess at. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're looking at older. All right, all right, all right. I, I didn't get much. Uh, that, didn't, that didn't seem to hit it. Well, I, um, pressed, I pressed a button. It said, and the button says "all right" on it. I, I heard that, but it, from Blake's uh, motions of his head, I don't think that was well, the right you, one. Technically, you're wrong, but you're giving it a college try. So yeah. that's all. Pick one more, and we'll tell you. Um, I, to, blah, blah, blah. to hang out and drink beers. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best part. Um, let me think. Um, He's going for four now. Did Did you agree with the beer one? I do agree with the beer one. We'll okay, take we'll that take, one. All right. All right. I love Molly Cyrus. Um, three reasons, the pillars of the show. You're going to do it. I'm going to do it just for if, if, if only a bunch of Joe's family listen to this for and have never heard the show. I One it. is it, it was a pilot television show that never went to series, whether it aired or not is irrelevant. Woo! Number two, we had to find it on the internet. Awesome! And number three, it had to be free, baby. <clears throat> That's right. So right. you were close, Joe. I mean, you were close. You were in the ballpark. So this one never actually made it to TV. None of the ones we watched. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it made it might have been on TV, but it didn't get past one episode. Ah, I one, see, I see. one and done. We've dug ourselves a, a very niche uh, <laughs> part of the podcasting world. Yeah, one that often goes unexplored. Yeah. So I, I remember having conversations, brief ones, with you about this podcast, and you know, I, I can remember having conversations saying there, you must not have very many podcasts. But oh. but ironically, I remember you telling me, no, it's ironic yeah. how many yeah. of these he finds there are. he's found. So I, I thought this I thought this podcast was going to end like six years ago. <laughs> right. I'm the brains, and he's he's the good looks. Uh, you, you you might have half of it. What what episode is this, Blake? Do you know, uh, this is season thirty four, episode five. So so we've been doing it for thirty four years. Well, how many episodes is that? Uh, th- 345. 346. 35. This is the 335th episode. 335th episode. You've been doing this for 35 years? No, it's only, it's, 
It, no. Oh, I was just saying. But it has been 300 and what? This this is our 335th episode. Jesus. And we've never every it's <clears throat> every week we've released an we've episode. We've never missed a week. Mm-mm. Wow. Not even when we didn't want to do it. <laughs> Which is most of Blake's like weeks. Some of the guests from what I'm hearing. That's all right. <laughs> You're probably asking yourself, where can I find the entire episode of Adventures of Nick Carter? We can do so by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube. Joe? I, 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 feel, here, I, I feel as though when somebody's never been on the show, it's not fair to them to... to, to no, you're scared of Joe. You were looking at me like I was supposed to do something there. I didn't know what to do. I know. It's, it, it, I, I, then I feel bad by no, doing you're, that. No, you're just scared of Joe. And I get it, too. I'm scared of him. We, we put people on the spot, and they don't know what to it's, say there. And it's which fine. is the joke. Which is the joke. Part, it's part of the joke, but some people know what the answer is because they listen to the show or they've been on before. Right. And usually Blake says it's funnier when the guest doesn't know. He didn't say that with you because he's scared of you. Because you're well, a, you're a man in every way that Blake isn't a man. <laughs> hey, did you ever stop drinking beer and start eating a bunch of ice cream? I do. Because that's what Blake I'm a big did. ice cream fan. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what my life is right are, now. Are you still doing it? I'm trying. What uh, what ice cream are you doing? I, I'm still on. I'm really. I'm still digging on that um, dreamsicle. Dreamsicle. I can't really. <laughs> but yeah. So you go to Kroger. And you can get yourself a nice four freedom whiskey, and then you can also leave there with a tub. It's, they are tubs, right? Sure. Let's be honest. You can use them like later on. You can use them to like store <laughs> screws in. You put all your. It's the only way to buy ice creams in a tub. <laughs> put all your roofing nails in it. <laughs> right. Um, but then, yeah, but Blake loves uh, Dreamsicle ice cream. That's you ever had favorite. that before, Joe? I have had that before, but uh, it's more of a sherbet, and I'm not a sherbet guy. Is that? Would you agree? Ooh, no, I would say this is not a sherbet. You know, I don't want to move the show along at all until we hash this out. No, no, let's figure out the sherbet ice cream bit right now. It. I don't. You think- something called Dreamsicle just does not. Go well with me. Uh, I'm Maybe it's the sickle part. Yeah. <laughs> Death comes in many forms. <laughs> kind of explains the handshake. What is your favorite kind of ice cream? Uh, I don't know that there's a actually favorite, but the favorite that you can buy in the big tub <laughs> is probably the cookies and cream. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll do some cookies and cream. And when we say this, let's be clear. We're talking about that perfectly <laughs> round clear plastic tub when you when you peel off the top it sounds like uh, you, yeah, can't, yeah. you can't hide it yeah no. it's like and instead of like four quarts it's like five quarts yeah it's yeah. a huge yeah. bucket it's <laughs> it's like a part of a five gallon lowe's bucket of ice cream is what it is right <laughs> very similar anyway always worry about the strap breaking sometimes oh, they do i know because then when the strap breaks you're like this is this tub is 75 percent worthless now <laughs> i made a promise or, to myself or, or the other thing is is if you lose the lid, and you like have it in the garage, and then you lose the lid, or the the lid cracks, the lid cracks, then if yeah. okay, just a rain gauge after that. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you something your dog's gonna drink water out of if you leave it on the ground. If you are losing the lid to your ice cream, you are telling me that not only are you not stopping your alcohol consumption, it may be increasing. <laughs> Who loses the lid to the ice cream? <laughs> It happened. You can't locate that. You have to finish the tub after that. Yeah. Then you, you then can't you just, put it back. Yep. You go like, oh, well. I lost another one. <laughs> <laughs> Summary of the pilot. A detective discovers that a colleague's death is tied to the disappearance of a wealthy Playboy's wife. Blake, do you want to grade that summary? Um, I would give it a B. A B is on the, on the um, scale from elementary school, A through F. Do you, do you want to grade the summary as well, Joe? You don't have to. Yeah. I'll give it a C. Okay. A B and a C. All right. Okay. All right. How about you? You never get the you never get the grade. And I refuse to. <clears throat> I plead the fifth when it comes to summaries. <laughs> Interesting facts. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Interesting Facts. This is the part of the show where Jason has scoured the internet to find facts about this pilot that you may not know. All we ask is that you do one simple thing, and that is to not give your opinion of these facts. They are facts. And your opinion is irrelevant. Please don't taint someone else. <laughs> Please don't taint someone else's experience by sharing your opinion. Joe, he's gonna give he's gonna give these facts. You just can't. You can comment on them. You just can't give your opinion on them. Okay. Understood. Okay. <clears throat> Jason gets really really ruffled. I think you punched a guest one time, right? When they gave their opinion. In their sternum. 
You always pick the sternum. Is that why I'm sitting closest to him? That's right. I have a really long reach. <laughs> it's about five and a half foot reach. I got long limbs for my mom's side of the family. Interesting facts. Nick Carter is a fictional character who began as a dime novel private detective in 1886 and has appeared in a variety of formats for over more than a century. Fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. <clears throat> I did recognize the name. That explains did it. Did you really? Yeah. You're probably thinking of the Backstreet Boys. Oh, you right? probably. God maybe. damn it. You I mean, <laughs> took my joke. You took my joke. It says right here. It says right here. Yeah, read me the joke that you had written. That's probably where I heard it. I thought it was going. I thought I was going to watch a show about a guy mm-hmm. from NSYNC. All right, I blew it. I almost played an NSYNC song as the as the intro, but you know what I played instead? I played a song uh, by Camera Obscura. It's an Irish uh, indie band. And the song's called Lloyd, I'm Ready to Be Heartbroken, because there's a guy who's heartbroken in the show, and there's a guy named Lloyd in the show, yeah. and I thought it'd fit. That's good. You know, I, I don't know how far we are in this show, but... <laughs> He's like, I'm I want to go home. I'm, I'm 10% no. in. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with the research already. Oh, I do. I just... I, I mean, I can't help it. I mean, I, I find the time to, yeah. to to bear down. and It's amazing. I like to have a life. Most of the comments we get from people are is, I can't believe all the work Blake has done for the show. <laughs> And all I can say is I agree with you. I can't believe it either. This is all Jason. Jason does all the work. No, Blake, Blake's the technical wizard, and as we mentioned before, he's the, the beautiful, handsome face of the program as well. I'm the abbot. That's right. He's the abbot. Would you say I'm I would, the abbot? I would consider changing that to get more views. I, I, I probably right. We're both abbot. <laughs> both abbot. The, uh, the character was first conceived by Orman G. Smith and created by John R. Coriel. Carter headlined his own magazine for years and was then part of a long-running series of novels from 1964 all the way to 1990. Fact. Wow, that all the way to 1990. Mm -hmm. Films were created based on Carter in France, Czechoslovakia, Germany, and the United States as early as the 1920s in silent format. Nick Carter has also appeared in many comic books and in radio programs alongside with the likes of The Shadow. Ooh, I was going to say The Green Lantern. What evil lurks in the hearts of men? I'm going to go through my comic books and look and see if I have one. Hey. Are you a comic book boy? I, 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 I was into comic books for a couple of years of my life. I want to stop the interesting facts for a second. What's uh, Tell me about your comic books. Uh, so I, it was just something I got into. A, a guy I used to work with uh, got into comic books, and when he was done reading them, he'd let me read them. And next thing I know, I started buying comic books and... I just kind of put them to the side. So I have a, a few. I got one of the biggest ones I got into, uh, which I had quite a few of the uh, magazines from it was uh, Spawn. Ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So got into quite a bit, but I do have I do have some uh, Shadow and those others. But uh, you know, I a lot of them I've given away over the years, and then they gave some away. And then they were going to get rid of it. I gave got uh, some of my collection back. I've probably got fifty fifty. Uh, Comics with me right now that are some of the back from the nineties. Spawn, I think, really had its heyday in the nineties. It did, it did. And Spawn was um, th- that was a like the a, movie was depressing. It was it yeah, just ruined. There was it. there was a live action one live action film, but I think they've been teasing another one for a while. But I think there's, since then there's been several uh, animation uh, mm-hmm. series of of uh, Spawn. Did you ever get into those? Uh, no, I have not. No. But Spawn is a pretty dark adult comic book series, right? It is, yes, a lot to do with the, uh, hell. And the devil. Is there titties in it? And a bunch of, there's a lot of tits in it. <laughs> Let me write, hold on, write yeah, it right down. Right I'll, bring, I'll bring some comics in for you to read. There you Spawn go. Right, interesting facts back on. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. In 1972, Robert Conrad made a television pilot, The Adventures of Nick Carter, that we're discussing today, which was set in the Victorian era. It was shown as a rare made-for-TV installment of the ABC Sunday Night Movie, which normally featured theatrical releases edited for broadcast. This is that pilot. It was released on February 20th, 1972. Fact. Ooh, very close to the birth date. Very close. Okay, we didn't get your actual birthday, but that's close. Very close. It's March, right? Hold on. Hold on. No, February. February. Wait, hold on. You were born on like February 29th, were you? 28th. Oh, on the 28th? Oh. My due date was the 29th. So the, you were born in a, in a leap year? In a leap year, yes. Oh, my God. So it's like a close call. So if you were born on the 29th, you would be 12 years old now, maybe. <laughs> good good math, yes. <laughs> He's very good at math. <laughs> yeah, quick. I, I see <laughs> numbers. <laughs> I have, I have, that's my only gift. I'm uh, still on the one. Someone put the two to it. Someone call him a savant. So, 
There, there's a word that comes before savant sometimes, right? <laughs> the word's idiot. <laughs> Stars J.P. Morgan as plush horse singer. Unrelated to the pilot, J.P. was fired from the very racy The Gong Show program by going too far. She exposed her breasts on national television. End of interesting facts. Nice. Way to go, Bess. Hashtag Gong Show. Hashtag Spawn Titties. Ooh, loved Gong Show back when I was a kid. I like Gong because it rhymes with the word dong. Yeah. Was that was and, that uh, was the was the first guy on there the guy with, the short guy with the curly hair who was like the big pervert? What was I, his name? I don't know. That, he was a little crazy. That's, yeah, that's he little was. Yeah, me. he was. Uh, he was a little weird. I, I think. I think he might have been the second guy because I okay. thought he was. Uh, from my memories back, was he was the only one. Then I remember watching some previous episodes that had another guy. I think yeah. he was only on there for a short term. I thought mm. something happened to him. I don't know. We'll have, to, research we'll have to have our, our crack team look that up. That's you. <laughs> All right. Um, Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I wonder if Jason got some Twitter responses. That's a good voice, isn't he? You should really get a uh, music thing for that. Oh, I thought you were going to say wife. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Uh, yeah, I'll think about Any, <laughs> just a female in your life. Oh, Blake Blake has got um Blake has got a beautiful voice, doesn't he? Like 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 an, like a, pretty good. Like an angel. Uh, <laughs> like an angel who smokes too much. Yeah. No, I don't have any Twitter responses. Everyone involved in the show is pretty much dead. Hey, let's put ten minutes on the clock. Not a true. We're not gonna do that. Um and we'll talk about the entirety of Adventures <laughs> of Nick Carter. Well, how long was this? A little over an hour? Yeah. Yeah, an hour and twelve, an hour and fifteen. We're going to break it down. We're going to loosely talk about it. Um, we'll, we'll start. And anything that you want to chime in on, Joe, please go right ahead. Any, any remembrances or thoughts, we'll dig right in. Blake, you want to start us off? Yeah, it starts off at a, an old-timey hotel, and uh, it was in New York. My sixth and seventh words are old and timey. Really? And you're going to want to high-five that shit. <laughs> um, and I wrote down uh, uh, room number uh, 215, mm-hmm. and, that, and that's where uh, this... Guy that we don't know, this older guy goes, and he picks the lock into in room two fifteen. Right. It, it does seem to be um, like a Victorian era. Like interesting facts. So what, yeah. what would you guys say? Like the nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. There were well, cars. They still they were the wagon wheel cars. They were the old cars, so it had to be even what, before that. What what years did you say? I, I was guessing twenties or thirties. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Right that's what I'm get. I'd guess right. same. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all we know is that women were wearing many, many layers of clothing in the middle of the summer. That's true. I think. It's, do you think that was to a time before deodorant to mask our horrible, horrible body odor? Um, I don't know, but I, I do notice that like every man wore a suit all the time, whether he was going to the grocery store, and this still happened in the fifties and sixties. But, mm. but, um, you know, it, these are these are dirty times, like. Dirty towns. I mean, you know what I mean. It's like, even yeah. like with the cowboys, like you know, H- the, human the, shit running through the streets. Yeah, and 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 but they're all wearing suits. And now right. today, I, I, I almost, w- almost no shit in the street. <clears throat> There's no shit in the street almost. <laughs> and I'm like, I, can I wear sweatpants outside to go somewhere? Pe- people wearing no. People wearing tank tops to church, right? <laughs> you know, I felt it was I felt it was back in the same time frame because the very beginning scene, seeing those old cars come through. Mm-hmm. But then he walks upstairs, and I expected to be more of like a skeleton key type thing, and he's got uh, a lock pick, and I yeah. thought it didn't fit the time. Mm. Yeah, I, Ooh, I, so maybe that's, that's something we need to think about. We'll it. make note of that. So the man that we see, he looks outside, and he sees a lady, and she appears to be drugged or something. <laughs> and my favorite kind. <laughs> they don't talk back. <laughs> this is just like Adventure Time, based off of your life, right? <laughs> The lady was being put in the car, and the man that we see follows. He comes out the window, but he, he he's he's found out quickly. The people yeah. taking him, they see him, and he's pursued with a gun, and he eventually is shot and falls down some stairs. Yeah, where he is shot again to death. Yeah, his name is Sam Bates, and yeah, mm-hmm. he and you don't know what you don't you don't know his name at the time, but I, Joe, one of the qualities I do have many many qualities uh, is that I I do remember people's names on these. I write these people's names down, so that's. Because he likes to make people feel as good as he wants to be made feel good by other people, right? That, that <laughs> it makes people feel good when you just meet them, Joe, and you remember their name, Joe, right? The, it's it's very impressive. I'm horrible with names. Yeah. What would you guess my name is? Eric. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> Eric. It. <laughs> ooh, ah, Eric. Ooh, ah, Eric. Ooh, ah, Eric. Call me Eric. I I do get that. Someone said you look like an Eric. I say I agree. Yeah. Anybody with a bad big of forehead should be called Eric. Anyway, so um. Let's see. Here we go. So just just a comment yeah, about please. the death of this this guy. Yeah, I found it ironic 
during the scene that he kept running, trying to get into doors, trying to get into mm-hmm. doors, into windows, wherever he get into, kept running from this guy. Door to door. Yeah. He gets shot, falls through the one he's trying to get through, <laughs> down the bottom of the stairs. The guy comes yeah. down after him and points his gun, and then he pulls out a gun. <laughs> Would, would he not pull that out before when he was running from the it's, guy and be prepared? Uh, you know, proper preparation prevents a piss poor performance. And this yeah. this guy, yeah. we find out later that uh, that's probably why I didn't make it to the series. Yeah, that's you're 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 pointing out things that like, makes it so you I could tell you paid attention that's to right. it. That's, that's good. Exactly right. um, we find out later that Sam Bates uh, he used to be a cop and uh, now he's a private <clears> dick. <throat> <laughs> he's a private dick. Dicker. Yeah, he he does all kinds of dickering. And we, we find out that uh, him and uh, Nick uh, Nick kind of grew up with him. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that's the importance of him in there. Well, we, after uh, uh, Sam Bates is killed, we cut to some fairly upbeat music, and we uh, get some panning shots of a street following a young lady wearing all red. She looks like an equestrian, like she's going to get on back of a horse. Oh, but, but she's going to side saddle. She, gonna... she would have to side saddle. Right. It felt like Laverne and Shirley without one of them. That's right. <laughs> A, 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 a Lavernless. Uh, that's a, that's an old show. I don't know if you get. No, no. Feel me off of Marzio, Marple Top Incorporated. We're gonna do it, right? Lenny and Squiggy. Squiggy. Yeah. R.I.P. Squiggy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we see the title card here, and then uh, she, uh, the lady. Well, the camera first heads into Slattery's gym, and we witness a boxing sparring match. And there we see Nick Carter talking to a guy about. He's like, I'm going to invest in this fighter, but I want to see if the guy can punch. So I'm going to get him myself and see. And then the, the lady with bright the bright red outfit, who turns out her name is Roxy, she comes in and she tells, hey, Sam Bates is dead. And um, then as soon as she tells him that information, he gets uh, punched and knocked out, which is <laughs> yeah. a pretty good, it's a good sequence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Foxy Roxy. Foxy Roxy. Indeed. <clears throat> uh, so Nick uh, is apparently Sam Bates' closest family. And so he goes to identify the body. And he said, uh, by the by the time Sam was found, it had been weeks. Yeah. Apparently, so that's pretty gross. Yeah, for sure. Because I bet they, they were wishing they had formaldehyde back then. They wish they did. At least and, some bleach. Yeah, at least something bleach. Um, then um, we go through, and there's a they cut to a party. It's, there's a party going on. There's a guy on top of the table, and he's just making it rain, which is what we call it now. But back then, they probably wasn't calling it making it rain. <laughs> and all these chicks are just groveling over this money. And it was this point in the show, I was like, damn it. If Adventure Time would have given mm. me the money I deserved, right. I could have been standing on ta- a table and just been you. throwing money. And, and and the bills were huge. They were like they were like they were like the size of like the Constitution. Well, um, Nick obviously shows up at this party because he's our main character. But right before this scene, we should mention that Nick goes sees uh, Keller at the police station. Oh yeah, Keller. And uh, he's someone that he knows at the police department, and he has a lot of information. It's kind of confusing to hear all at once because we're, we're the first five minutes of the show. We yeah. don't know what's going on. And, and there's a lot of names. So <laughs> this, that, that's what I wrote about this time too. Is there's a lot of names and a lot of people's names that you're being told about that you don't even know. We're yet. getting a big uh, yeah. exposition dump so that our main character Nick has things to like uh follow up on. There these right. are clues for him. That's that's one thing I found about this and uh, you know, not jokingly, but just statement of it not going too serious like you talk, uh becoming big was I noticed there's a lot of confusion in there. I don't know who they're talking about or what's going on and it comes later on, and, you, and it's it's a constant circle back. Yeah, but by the time movie. we're I'm done, I know all the names. Mm-hmm. So I like that they're not. It's almost like they're not talking down to us. You know, they're, they're giving us a bunch of information that we but don't like you're know. Smart, about. You're smart enough. You'll pick this up. I, 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 I kind of like yeah. that about yeah. it when they it's confusing up front because <clears throat> they're not talking down to us. That's just someone who's seen 330 pilots, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have to. We have to. Yeah. But they're they're at a big party. It's at a place called what? The Plush Horse. I believe. The Plush right? Horse. Yeah. Yep. And uh, it's Freddie uh, Freddie Duncan. Mm-hmm. And Freddie Duncan, uh, if you want to envision, Freddie Duncan looks just like Harry Houdini. <laughs> I was gonna say, and Joe, I'm True. I'm so glad you mentioned comic books before because I think he looks like the Marvel villain Arcade. Do you know him? He was a, I a do Spider-Man, not. and we're not uh, fucking nerds, Jason. We're not nerds. Well, all right. <laughs> For those in the comic books, I'll, I'll didn't bite make my tongue. Too much. No, I'm gonna pull up a picture <laughs> of Arcade, and you guys. But do you know who Ar- You know who played Freddie um, Duncan? Huh. Uh, fucking Dean Stockwell. Legendary actor, and he was Al on uh, Quantum Leap. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 now. But he was he was bald then. But here he had a big tuff of curly hair, yeah. right? Yeah, bouffant hairdo. That's right. I'm gonna pull up a picture of Arcade, and you tell me if you've ever seen him, or if, if you think he looks like uh, Dean Stockwell's character Freddie. 
Because I think that he does. Kind of like that. He's kind of wearing a suit uh, with big curly hair off so to the side. So the face, definitely. Mm-hmm. I can't see it. I have glasses on. I, it, 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 yeah. Yes, start wearing your glasses. Yeah. Are, are, are you wearing your teeth tonight? No. They don't fit anymore. I told you. So, um, uh, <clears throat> so Nick comes in to talk to Freddie, and um, uh, during their conversation, I found this to be pretty <laughs> crazy. That while they're having a conversation, uh, Freddie just takes a little hit of cocaine. I did not see that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He, oh yeah. Goes, absolutely. Yeah, he did the whole fingernail. That was just nonchalant. Wow. And the conversation never stopped. Nope. It's like taking a drink of beer. I yep. didn't see that at all. I must have been writing. But yes, during the conversation, he, he's talking to Freddie. He's like, "Hey, do you know Sam Bates?" And Freddie's like, "No." He's like, "Well, you're employing him." He's like, "I don't know." I employ a lot of people. He's like, "Well, you're a liar." And so as soon as he calls him a liar, it was a ballroom blitz. Ballroom blitz. Yeah. That, that was an odd fight scene because it 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 almost felt staged. Are you calling me a liar? Yeah, and all of a sudden they look around at each other like it, it let's start. Let's yeah. start the fight. <laughs> yeah, it's like there was a, like a this weird pause, mm-hmm. and then the fight scene yeah. starts. A lot of haymaker punches. Oh yeah, a lot, a lot of, of being thrown yeah. on, and then subsequently through tables. Mm-hmm. Right. Then he just walks out when he's done. Oh yeah, he wins. He beats <laughs> up like yeah. five dudes. Yeah. Apparently, he, he picks up his hat and it's kind of smashed, and he's really irritated by it, and he just you know brushes Lease. it off yeah he this is fun. i'm on here uh, this is a lot during this pilot uh, uh nick kicks people's asses and then leaves or uh yeah that's a sleep at that a lot way. of haymakers <clears throat> roxy goes to see nick at uh sam bates place i guess they're over his, at his house or his apartment cleaning it out or whatever and then um otis duncan this is not the duncan <clears throat> we met at the uh, plush horse is a different duncan he calls on nick so, and otis apparently is uh freddie's dad right He's like the, the the head of the family. He's the 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 one that has uh, sourced all this wealth and you know, spoiled his children with it. And Otis apparently heard about what happened at the plush horse. He says, "Hey, I want Freddie to come in here, and I want Nick to come in here. We're going to resolve this." And uh, so Nick uh, subsequently hires Nick to find out what happened to the lady who was kidnapped. And this is Ivy Duncan, mm-hmm. right? And Ivy is is that Freddie's wife? Is that who it yes. is? Yes. Yes. And we get confirmation that Nick is, in fact, a private investigator. Because up to this point, it's never really said what he does. He's no, just, I thought he could have been a, 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 a he did mention He did mention right before the cocaine thing. Oh, he did that mention. He was, oh, that he, yeah, yeah okay, you're right. He's a private investigator. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I, uh, besides that, I, all I could have thought, he, maybe he was an escape artist? That maybe so. Not unlike Escape that we saw recently, right? That's, that was where the joke was. Pretty funny. Thanks. I just, what called, about uh, Nick it's called, Carter? It's called Callback. Is it a... Um, you think he's in the Backstreet Boys? In sync. You have a joke for the okay. Back at the plush horse, Nick's having drinks with Flo. And I think, is this the only time we see Flo during the whole show? Flo was talking to Freddie in the scene before, but okay. this is the only time that Nick is talking to Flo. And I, if I'm not mistaken, Flo is a prostitute, correct? She might. I, be. I was in that impression. Yes, yes because because Bess, <clears throat> Bess comes out and says, "Hey, you got you got somebody that wants to see or something." And it seemed to me that. Who came out? Is that the that's, best? That's yeah. the the big star, the one that was wearing earrings. Yeah, yeah, the big the big breasted lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the big broad, the, the big linebacker. <laughs> um, he asks her about. He asks Flo about uh, Duncan and Lloyd. Is it is it Lloyd Deves or Deans or Deebs? I, I never did. I think I heard Deans. Deans. Okay, so I, the, I'm not sure, but so uh, there are a lot I of. Thought names. you didn't like Sherbert. <laughs> a lot of names being thrown around here. Their connections to one another. I'm still not kind of keeping up with at this point. But then uh, the the lady, uh, the older broad, Bess comes out. <clears throat> Bess Tucker, I think, is her name, and she tells Nick to leave. And uh, as he's doing so, he notices that she's wearing earrings and says, "Are these new?" And she kind of like gets flustered, and he he notices that they're the same earrings that he saw in a picture of Ivy Duncan, who he which uh, picture he was given uh, from Otis yep. to find her. Um and. Uh, the one thing about Bess, and I will say, is she caves all throughout the show. She, <laughs> she, she, she's to me when I when I'm first meeting her, she's first coming out. She's all dabbled up. She owns this place. I'm assuming she's a madam of some kind, right? It must be, yeah. And so I'm thinking, strong woman, independent woman, and throughout this, she's just gives she, up everybody always. She, she's <laughs> yeah, she's the giver upper. <laughs> Nick heads into like a late night <clears throat> sermon. And he apparently knows the pastor, and he says, I'm going to give you some money. You give me some information. And then on his way out, apparently the, the pastor is also like a, a gambling bookie because he tells him <laughs> right. to put some yeah. money down on something. So, <laughs> And, I, and, and I, now that you brought since you brought it up, I noticed that there's a lot of times during this pilot that Nick, um, he either strongholds you for information 
or gives you money for information. Those are his two tactics. That's the only like he's not sly. He doesn't no. try to trick you into answering anything. He's not a he, smooth talker. He either gives you uh, money yeah. or he just punches <laughs> you in the face. To the to the other people in the series, but not to the audience. He holds it with holds information to the audience. That's, That's true. That's right. That's true. I wish he'd give it up. Um, immediately after leaving the pastor, Nick is accosted in the street, dragged into an alley. Uh, Nick kind of gets to the upper hand on these two guys that have uh, taken him back there, and then it's broken up by a couple of suited gentlemen, which I believe are police officers. <clears throat> that looks like right there, aren't they cops? Well, they're I was just wearing suits. I thought they were. I, I the whole time because they're they are on this pilot throughout. I just call them the goons. I think they're what's his name's goons. I don't Keller. know. The, yeah, the yeah. sergeant or yeah. whatever. He was. I call him Cigar Man. Okay. Mm. Well, they, they speak to him kind of ominously, and I, and I, I do think they are cops or something. They're, they're working for Keller in some way. But uh, Nick marches right into Keller's office after that, and, and how I, he, he basically says, hey, keep your goons off of me. Yeah. You know, he, know, he knows that he's getting uh, ramrodded there. Um, Roxy then doctors up Nick. She's um, apparently she kind of his nurse slash secretary, he says in this scene. Yeah, secretary for sure. Uh, a body is found, and Keller shows Duncan... The body, and they believe it's Ivy's body, Ivy Duncan, who was missing. And Keller says it was Lloyd Deems who killed her. And it, it almost sounds like in this scene, they're collaborating on a story to that is fake. They're, they're basically saying, we're working together right. to well, cover up the Freeman. <laughs> yep, Freeman, Freeman, someone. Freeman, somebody. Because they, they mention that, you know, they find women in this river dead all the time. Mm-hmm. And there's no way to identify her because obviously she probably had been in there, you know. Right. I mean, if Sam was in a in a in a basement for two weeks. I mean, this girl's got to be in the river for at least a, three or four weeks. Ooh, bloated! Just imagine the bloatness. Not, not great. Uh, <sighs> we hear some Asian music, and then uh, Nick enters what appears to be like a Chinese hotel. Yeah. And then again, he doesn't pay the guy, but he kind of roughs him up, right? Yeah. T- to get he's like, I want this information. And the guy's like, I don't speak English, blah blah blah. And he's like, he just grabs a hold of him. I don't fucking speak English to me. And then the so the guy that's running this place, he's got two goons that are sitting at a table. You know, yeah. his strong guys, they don't do anything. Those guys are getting demoted. No, he's just like, like, no, you ain't messing with yeah, me. Yeah, don't mess with me. I'm Nick yeah. Carter. You ever see me yeah. dance? Nick, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Nick gets into the room where Lloyd is, and he roughs him up, and he's like, hey, where is uh, Ivy anyways? I, I was in Chicago with her. I left her there. I came back here to New York, and now I'm kind of hiding from Freddie Duncan. And, and uh, Nick says, okay, I promise to keep your location a secret. Dude, can I say something here? Please. Who does Lloyd look like? Who does Lloyd look like? Boy, I don't know. I'm going to give you one word, and then you're going to give me the answer. All right. Wings. Oh. Um, <laughs> Lloyd uh, Lloyd Mathers. Oh, Lloyd. Okay. Uh, uh, Thomas Hayden Church. You think he looks like him, huh? Yeah. Okay. Are they, okay. Are you, are you a Wings fan? No. No. Yeah, me neither. I he doesn't like hockey. Sure. Uh, no, we're not uh, talking about hockey. We're talking about the television show. It's fine. I was going to say, I thought you were talking shows. and It was. Yeah. We were. Still. You don't remember the show Wings? I vaguely, but I didn't watch much. Airport on Nantucket? Two brothers? It was must-see TV, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe was too busy having a good time. Probably, yeah. probably doing manly things rather than sitting in front of the Dav- on the Davenport. I, I very rarely watch TV, and, and then I was a little hesitant when Blake asked me about this. I'm like, ah... I don't have much time to watch TV, but I made actually, it work. I actually enjoyed it. It was kind of yeah. it was kind of nice watching something older like this. Well, we're gonna grade it here in a few minutes, yeah. so so get your great uh, your rating ready. Um, <laughs> Lloyd goes to see. Um, yeah, let's yeah. See. Nick oh, says Nick he, says stay here and don't leave. Yeah, closes the door, goes down the stairs, <laughs> goes to the newspaper guy and sees that, and then runs up there and Lloyd's gone. It's like thirty seconds. Yeah, he done. sees that he sees Ivy's dead and heads right back up there. Lloyd's already gone. Yeah. So he goes to see Bess, and he tells her that Nick, uh, the he said, "Hey, uh, Nick t- or Lloyd told me this thing, a lie about Chicago," and then Keller arrives at Bess's place, and he lied about the body belonging to Ivy. So the three of those people are working together. <clears throat> Keller, Bess, and Lloyd are all working together. And Keller says, "I plan to frame someone for Ivy's murder." He tells uh, Lloyd to go lay low. At, I think at Bess's country house. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, this is so so Bess is like, yeah, okay. So they. They send him him off there, and the next scene, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is when she's going to go visit him, right? Mm-hmm. All right, did I jump ahead? Well, there, there's a quick scene in there where Roxy's like <clears> telling <throat> uh, Nick about a lady named Joyce Jordan who was like oh. an affair that uh, Freddie had, I believe. And she's a singer. Yeah, and so Nick is he, here. He's, he puts on a disguise. <laughs> this is one of I think two disguises that yeah. Nick utilizes, yep. and that but that he's using this so he can follow Bess without being made. Right. Right. 
and um, you know, on the train, right? Yeah. And what this is the best part. They get off the train. There's a car waiting for Bess. Uh, she gets in it and takes off. And this is how slow the cars were that uh, Nick just uh, kind of crouches down, follows behind it, and jumps on it and just squats down. Like, for, yeah, like on the bumper or something. Like where, the, the where, the, left, where they put that trunk or whatever, yeah. you know, like the chest. The boot. That's right. <laughs> That's why he's so strong. It's that grip strength. Yeah. God, if I just had grip strength, I could be a real good private dick. <laughs> Bess arrives to talk to Lloyd, and Nick is outside in his disguise. And then Nick sneaks around the outside of the residence. He removes <clears throat> the disguise and eavesdrops on Bess and uh, Lloyd's conversation. Bess leaves, and it looks like there are a couple of uh, Keller's thugs It's outside. the same two goons. And they come into the house with guns, and Nick uh, pulls a gun and takes a confused Lloyd to safety. Lloyd doesn't know what's going on. That was kind of that was weird to me. It was all quick. Yeah, you 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 come out of the shadows inside the house, <laughs> and then he's like, "Come with me." He's like, "Okay, okay." Yeah. I'm like, and a you're an intruder point. at that yeah. point. He's like, "Well, no you, t- you told me to stay in the hotel, and I didn't. I better do what you tell me to." <laughs> a chase ensues between uh, Lloyd and Nick, and then those two thugs, and they run through the woods. And Lloyd apparently has been shot, and, and then he dies. He in the, give, yeah, dies in the woods, and he yeah, gives up Keller's. Run. He get, he says the Keller. He, he gives up his name before he passes away, and the cops then find Lloyd's body and um, they plant Ivy's jewelry on it to frame him right then and there uh, for for Ivy's murder. The jewelry seems to be the focal point of what what everybody is. Stolen from someone, planted on yeah, someone, but it all it all sold stems to from someone Ivy. for money. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot yeah. of jewelry. Talk. Fifty thousand dollars worth she was looking to sell to get out. So mm-hmm. think about it, fifty thousand dollars in nineteen twenty or you know, yeah, twenties and thirties be millions. A billion yeah. dollars. A billion. That's dollars. right. A, to- a billion. Nick breaks into Bess's place. Um, when she arrives, she tells um, him about Lloyd, and or he he tells Bess rather about Lloyd that he's dead, and she's very distraught. Because they're lovers, right? Mm-hmm. They seem to be. Yep. And, and Nick really presses her for the truth. He's like, what is really happening? Here? Just leave. Just leave me alone. <laughs> you missed your calling. I know. You really did. <laughs> I, I should have been a fat prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time, my friend. Should have been. Give me some more ice cream. hey <laughs> Uh Later, Bess drops off Ivy's earrings to Keller, and Bess confirms that Ivy is not dead, and Keller is suspicious of Bess, and, and she's suspicious of him. They kind of have this... Very uneasy alliance between the two of them. Cut to uh, Nick is now backstage at some theater. He's there to see Joyce Jordan. That's the, the lead that Roxy gave him earlier. And he sees Freddie Duncan has left her a present, and she doesn't want to talk to Nick at all. She actually just kicks him out immediately. She, has, she doesn't want to say one word right. to him. Right, yeah. And, and she, doesn't, she doesn't like Freddie either. No, she yeah, really she... doesn't. So Nick goes to see a doctor who knew Ivy, and uh, Nick asks him about physically identifying uh, her with marks on her right, body, like a, like, a, like a birthmark yeah. or something. And he's like, "Well, I treated her because she b- broke her wrist." wrist yep. Yeah. And I, I thought this was cool that like um, he was they were showing the X rays and it was out of, there was plates of glass. They weren't like X rays today. They're like flimsy. It was like <laughs> actual cool. plates yeah, of glass. That'd be cool. Hey, you had to come into the office to see these. Like, right, yeah. You. <laughs> you can't check them on your phone. Well, Freddie, right. like they can now. Back at Freddie's place, he's there talking to, I believe, his brother Neil Duncan, and, and he's t- drunk. Jimmy's drunk. What's that? Jimmy's drunk. Which one's Jimmy? I mean, Freddie. Oh, Freddie. Freddie's drunk. Sorry, I was drunk. I wrote Jimmy down instead. Did you write Freddy. down that you were drunk? Oh, yep. Blake's <laughs> drunk. My bad. Um, they, um, yeah, he's at the. Re- they were talking to each other. They're brothers, and Freddie accuses Neil of being in love with Ivy, and then we see the two um, X-rays next to each other, and they said, "Hey, she broke her wrist." And this is the wrist of the person who was found dead. Not the same wrist. Not that lady. No. Um, and during this conversation between Jim, uh, Freddie and his brother, I, it kind of got really detailed, convoluted. I, I could I could figure out that he was in love with her and that Freddie knew it, but I, I didn't figure out did so. It was he accusing his brother of killing her or having her killed. I don't know. Whatever it was, I felt like it was a light accusation because, like, he wouldn't be nearly as upset as I would be if I knew someone had killed somebody. But he else. didn't. Li- he didn't like <laughs> Ivy. Freddie didn't like Ivy. It was that was for the next episode. They were going to cut. Oh that. yeah, oh, there you the go. story would have continued. Yeah. You could have put a whole episode on just that conversation. Yeah, that's true. We go to Ivy's funeral in the graveyard, and, and Nick talks to Joyce uh, once the service is over, and he's looking for information, and he gets it by convincing her. 
that he's working for Otis, not Freddy. Right. And Ivy asked Joyce to sell her uh, jewelry to get some money to leave town, as you were saying before. Oh, I, you know why? I, I, you guys didn't know what I was saying because I skipped ahead. Oh, what uh, were you saying? Oh, the, it's the, the scene with Freddy and his brother hasn't come up yet. That's probably why. Well, they did, they did talk briefly already. Right, once. but the, yeah. Uh, Nick goes to the hotel where Ivy was staying, and the front desk guy remembers her and who she was with. They used a fake name. And then Nick calls Roxy, and Bess is looking for him. He wants to meet with her. So she tells him that Keller came to Bess and Lloyd looking for Ivy, and the plan was to have Lloyd hide out while the story spread that Lloyd and Ivy ran off together. It's kind of convoluted yeah, at this point. Get, yeah. uh, Bess says that she believes that, uh, that Keller killed Ivy for the jewelry, and Nick doesn't buy it, so he thinks that... Keller is in need of a pipeline to the $50 million fortune that Freddie is standing to inherit when Otis, Otis dies. dies. And, yeah. and, and by the way, Otis apparently has been dying the whole show. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And he looked fine in that first scene. In the first scene, he looked he's dying, good. but he's, he's, he's even getting angry standing up, pointing fingers. Right. I'm like, throughout the show, they kept like saying, he's like, he's, oh, he's, he'll, be, he'll be dead soon enough. And I was like, in the first scene, he looked fine. Yeah. They gave him like two weeks. <laughs> he's a deep duck, duck, gives me. That's exactly right. <laughs> Uh, Bess arrives at home, and Keller is is there waiting for her, which is not a good sign for her. <laughs> Freddie tells Neil that he's leaving for London, and Freddie's concerned that he'll be written out of his father's will because he thinks that Freddie uh, killed Ivy. Otis, he th- he thinks that his father Otis right. thinks gonna that find his out. son Freddie killed Ivy. And he's he says uh, he says Neil, you're going to make sure that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. If, at, at this point, I think Freddie kind of has figured out what's going on. Yeah, and, but but I wrote here. Freddie blackmails Neil, obviously. Then I'm like, they got married. It seemed like it seemed like what Freddie was saying is that he took her to that hotel and then married her when she was drugged up. I don't. That's what. And then killed her. I don't know. They, yeah, Neil took Ivy to the hotel. They were there together. That's who the guy was. And and Sam was following Ivy apparently there as like he was the retired. Freddie was Freddie had him working for him. Right. And, okay. And then Neil killed her, apparently. And Neil breaks down and kind of admits it right then and there. Uh, later at Nick's uh, residence, Nick gets a call from the front desk guy back at the hotel with some information. And he says, because that's another guy he paid, and he didn't charm right. or beat up. He just paid him for right. money. And he says the front page of the paper today, if you look at the front page, it contains a photo of the guy that Ivy was with. It was uh, Freddie and Neil mourning at the Ivy uh, f- funeral. Yeah. He says that that's the guy that was there. And so the front page of the paper is is of that funeral. And that night, Nick is in disguise again. So this is, I think, his second or third disguise right. at this hmm. point. He comes up on a car. And I don't understand this scene. Why was Nick approaching this car? Can you explain this to me? If I'm not mistaken, he wanted to talk to Bess. But how did he know she was in that car? I, well, she was in there, but she was dead. She was absolutely dead. <laughs> not even a very good dead. Like You would have thought maybe she was so, sleeping. So hmm. she was. he was supposed to meet her. She called him to meet her yeah oh that's and what so that's why she was in there and that's why they had her propped up because they were look, <coughs> i think they were looking to kill him right they, but why they was he in disguise him? again though if he was going to meet her i think i think he figured it was it was a, a setup, tri- a setup. Yeah, at some point well he was right wasn't yeah. he? and he, got, he was but he just handled it poorly he got this yeah that's the one time where his haymakers don't work <laughs> out and he, and he he himself gets knocked yeah, out here yeah. and um there's a fun shot of nick getting punched falling to the ground the camera like uh zooming in on him and when they zoom out, he's in a different location. Yeah. I thought that was kind of a cool shot they did here. Yeah, yeah. It reveals the location. Especially that age is film. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a lot of times where we look at some of these old pilots and we're like, isn't that something interesting that they did, you know, back in the 50s and 60s? Right. So we get to see stuff like that on occasion. In this new location, it appears that Bess's body is being disposed of. They're throwing it in a furnace, I think. <laughs> and Keller is there with his cronies. I think it was Archer was one of them yeah, and some other guy. And it's revealed that um, Archer is the one who shot Sam. And Keller, uh, Keller instructs them to throw Nick into the furnace as well. Right. So he Holy fight, cow. He fights with them. They have, and then they they end up on a roof. Keller and Nick somehow end up. They're about to throw him in the furnace, and he start. He does like a backflip and like just runs out of yeah. it. The, the same guys has kicked his ass in like ten seconds earlier. Right. Now it's a big long fight. Oh right. yeah. Well, now he's got their number now. <laughs> That's right. He knows their weaknesses. He knows all their tricks. <laughs> That's right. So the uh, Keller and Nick uh, square off on a rooftop, uh, and um, Keller uh, falls off the roof and dies. Yeah. Yeah, he falls off for sure. And uh, later, Nick uh, confronts the um, Neil Duncan at the Duncan house and fills in the gaps of the, of the story. And Otis is calling for Neil. Otis, by, like we said, Otis, by the way, has been dying this whole pilot, apparently. And then Neil tells Nick where Ivy is buried because he didn't fat kill her. Right. 
Uh, back at Nick's place, Nick receives a framed photo of him and Sam uh, together from his uh, secretary, Roxy, and they go for lunch together, and uh, the phone's ringing. Eh, they let it ring. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's like, Nick's like, I'm about to take my secretary to task. I'm about to take my reward. Yeah. He will take his reward, <laughs> if I write, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joe, you were very vocal about it during uh, the pilot there. Why didn't this work? Yeah, I think you had a few good ideas in there, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, I think they lead you astray too much. They don't, they they withhold too much information and give it to you too late. It's, it's, it, there's a lot of back and forth in how the film, it's almost like you start following it and then you lose it. The storyline, yeah. yep, and yeah, the storyline, and then you start following it again. You know, so it's there's a lot of back and forth in it. I think as much information as they give you up front that it appears to be confusing, and I, and I was saying before, I feel like they're not talking down to which, us, which is good. There also does seem to be a lot of I, I use the word convoluted. There's a lot of confusion during the show, right. about what's what, and there are some storylines that get muddled. Yeah, and and the, and the fight scenes are kind of weird. Uh, at times, they're they're just out of the blue. The they're, fight they're, scene. They're like we have to, like we have to, we, we have a private investigator <laughs> yeah. mystery. Show we have stuff. to, have, we have to have fights. Yep. And again, I will, I will go back to Escape from a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I like that one. That I, that it was the same situation. He, this guy was a private investigator, and he was a like a retired um, escape artist. Escape artist, and every fight that they had. He, he got out of some kind of contraption. He was punching guys through uh, cardboard boxes left and right. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, How but, about you? Why do you think it didn't work? Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, you know, Beck, no, no one's talking about Nick Carter today in 2022. Maybe in the 70s, Nick Carter was still kind of known as this character who'd been around for a long time in comic books, radio shows, and these pulp novels. I don't know the name Nick Carter though, in that sense, yeah. you know. So um, may- maybe it wasn't true to the character. Uh, maybe what I think is probably a little bit more true is to do a show in a Victorian time. That's that's a big budget item yep. there to, to try to do all these period pieces week yeah. after week to, yep. to to show the the streets of nineteen uh, twenties uh, New York City and all these old cars and stuff. That that yeah. adds up. I wrote time period piece are expensive to film. Well, we're on yeah. the same page there. It's like we've done this before, once or twice. I, you know, I was looking at some of that as we were, as I was watching as well. You know, you look at today's films, and they can put a background to anything and make it look like it's anywhere. Yep. This had to be actual at those times. Oh yeah, they had to go Practical on location yeah. and find those places. And I was, you know, I, I I didn't know what to expect here, so I'm thinking I'm I've really got to pay attention to this because hmm. maybe they're going to ask me what was in the background, what <laughs> oh, no, no. was the picture here, or something. How big were best? So I'm tits. really, I mean, <laughs> what size bra did she wear? <laughs> But I was trying to really pay attention to things, and I and I thought the same thing. I'm like, you know, that that had to be some high dollars just to just to film into that place, and because right. you got you got to close it off in order for the filming to happen. And yeah, and if they were money. like, even if they were on, even if it was on a lot, it was still. I was gonna say like Seinfeld is a great example. Anytime they're outside in the streets on Seinfeld, it was a back lot, and people always said that looks so fake. That's the fakest shit I ever seen. The, they were working with the same like half of a street throughout the entirety of the series. But if you're going to be doing this here, it could have been a back lot. But you're probably talking about a bunch of different locations sure, in that yeah. time period. You know, it's not, right. this is not modern day where you could just go shoot somewhere. You you had to make it look like it was the 1920s, right. and, that, and that that stuff adds from up. the signage yeah. to the 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 decoration of the buildings and stuff, yeah. architecture. A lot of investment for it to bomb. How, yeah. how many, do you know how many episodes there were? We only talk about shows that had one episode. Yep. So it, it was only one episode yep. that was ever filmed. So that's like the first and last episode that was ever every done. Every episode of this show that you're on right now is exactly that. Well, that's, Television that's, shows with one episode. We that's that. ironic. You think there would be, you think the first one would have some kind of background coming to it. Uh, so uh, well, I mean, I, it comes in in the movie that you kind of get the idea of what he is and what's going on, right? But but they might be leaning on the audience, knowing that this character has uh, literally been around eighty or ninety true. years in pop culture. But then again, you know, we're fifty years removed from yeah. that now, so that's pop culture changes quite right. a bit. And we and again, we don't know the name Nick Carter, right? Like the three of us guys. Right. But back then, maybe they did a little bit more than we do now. Tough I, to say. I'm going to have to ask my mother. But get, let's get her on the phone. <laughs> Hey, Mom, you ever heard of Nick Carter and his adventures? Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. 
That was, that was uh, Blake's wife again. Hmm. What a fox, am I right? Absolutely. Did a lot of editing to make that sound sweet. I like when he's busy at the moose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when he's busy doing something. <laughs> and then Molly's in the corner with her wedding ring on the floor. <laughs> This is the part of the show where we say not only have uh, the three of us very, very attractive young men seen The Adventures of Nick Carter, but other people have seen it as well. This is uh, where we talk about other people's ratings and reviews of Nick Carter. Let's go to imdb.com. IMDb is a website that Blake has uh, created. Did it's you upstairs. leave it at work? It's upstairs. Okay, so sometimes I'll ask, uh, I almost called you Nick. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I ask Blake. Mr. Carter. Yeah, it's Mr. Carter to you. What I am to you. Here, here, here's some money. Call me Mr. Carter. Welcome back, Carter. <laughs> On occasion, I would ask uh, Nick here what uh, IMDb stands for, and he says, man, I had a whole list that I wrote up, and I left it at the office at my job. I was like, oh, my God. I ask him now, and it's upstairs. Maybe in a few weeks, <laughs> we'll be in the next room, huh? It was the only thing I forgot to bring down. <laughs> Internet Movie Database is what it stands for. What do you think people from around the world graded Adventures of Nick Carter on a scale of 1 to 10 decimal points in play? Joe, it's up to you. Oh, we got to start with you. We got to set the so base. So on, on a 1 to 10, what they rated it? You can start if you want, Joe, but yeah, 1 to he's 10. A, he's a pro. We've been doing this for an hour and a half. Yeah, it's good. A, do you use so, IMDb Pro? No, I do not. Okay. No, I, So I have no idea what we're talking about. So this is they're, they're just rating this this. Episode people who have watched it have typed on IMDb and rated it one to ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a tough question because it bombed for one thing. So you gotta you gotta consider that people didn't care much for it. But I I didn't mind it. There's some there's some oddity to it and some different things. I'm gonna give it maybe I'm gonna give it right across the middle of the board at a five. Okay. Blake, did you cheat this week? Yes, I did. Right. It's a six point eight. It is a six point wow. eight, and that's from ninety one ratings. That's a, that's quite a bit for something pretty good. Watched. Yeah. Let's look at some critic reviews. ModCinema.com says, uh, Though hampered by a tight budget, the film does a nice job of recreating 19th century world of crooked cops, graft greedy <clears throat> politicians, all-powerful plurocrats, raggedy paperboys, and Lower East Side lowlifes. Adventures of Nick Carter was one of the three pilots for a projected rotating series of de- 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 TV detective shows based on famed literary sleuths. The other two series in this aborted project were to have spotlighted the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and Hildegard Withers. Ooh. Never heard of that last uh-uh. guy. You said it was a guy? Hildegard? Is that a guy's sure. name? Sure. Sure. Really? Wicked parents. Wicked. <laughs> Wicked. Wicked. It's like, Wicked it's, smart. It's, it's the same uh, parents that named their kid Gaylord. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, brother. Viewer reviews, 7 out of 10 scars, nice period piece. I understand that this was a pilot for a TV series and not sell... It's a shame because um, Nick Carter, the character, had a lot of possibilities that could have been explored in the in the role uh, Robert Conrad was well cast to play. Guest cast was a good one and would watch the unusual turn by Pernell Roberts recommended. I don't know who Pernell Roberts uh-huh. is. Um, did we lose the light there? Oh. All right, sorry. Uh, more period piece adventure starring Wild Wild West Robert Conrad. Did you guys, would you guys watch that show when you were young? Wild Wild, Wild, Wild West. West? I did. He did. So that, did you recognize Robert Conrad then as the star of, of the no, show? I'm horrible at that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Uh, five out of ten scars. Robert Conrad is Nick Carter. Robert Conrad plays the hard as nails New York private eye in Adventures of Nick Carter, but his charisma cannot salvage an otherwise routine murder mystery with cliched characters and stock situations. Stock uh, situations. The last headline here is uh, five out of ten scars. Hollywood stars past and present. Play dress up. There's yeah. There's a few notables in there, right? Sure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCC Hollywood Stars. Please stand by for I love that voice when she talks. Mm. It's it's something it's about it. It's like a siren. Something, Sexy. Something that gets me going. Sultry. Sultry. This is the part of the program where we uh, we say, we've given you all the information. All right? The show's free. <laughs> you can download and listen to this for free. What do you want from us? Right. Blood? Sweat? So t- tears? Apparently, it's not off. hard to fit... Uh, to figure out which episode it is that we watch. That's true. That's very true. That, you know what? I know he's never pointed it out before, but yeah. It's... That's that's pretty straightforward talk right there. Um, now it's our turn to grade Adventures of Nick Carter. We take it from this, uh, a scale that we've devised very very specifically. In, uh, right? Yeah. 
Do you want to talk about the scale? Sure. The scale is based off the television show Wings from the 1990s. And we have uh, taken each character from that show and ranked them. And that's how we come up with our 1 to 7 scale. A 1 being worse. That's a Roy Biggins. And a 7 being the best. At, that's a Brian Hackett. In between there, there's Antonio Scarpacci, Faye Yetten, um, Helen Chapel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and some other ones, and all the rest, and all the rest. Yeah, Blake's. Um, it was like seven years ago that we came up with this, right? But we do use it every week for the past seven years. Some would say if you devise a scoring system and it only con- uh, consisted of seven numbers and subsequently seven names that went along with those numbers, Blake would know. Bud Bronski. He doesn't know. Bud Bronski. And there's one more, but you'll never guess it. <laughs> I, I would bet your uh, your life that you would never guess it. If my life's on the line, I'd definitely get it wrong on purpose. One to seven scale. Joe, as our guest, we turn to you. How do you rate Adventures of Nick Carter? One's the worst and seven's the best. One's the worst. I, I, I'm still going to stick, even going with the lower scale with the seven, I'm going to stick with the five because it, it wasn't bad. You know, For for me, it kind of takes me back into when I was a kid watching TV. They're very similar episodes to what I used to watch. Mm. And uh, so I actually... I. I, I will say this. When I first started watching the episode, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get into this. <laughs> this could be a long hour. But then I actually kind of got into it a little bit. Not as not as much as what I would into you know some more modern day shows, but I, I still got into it a little bit. So I'll still give it a five that's out of good. seven. Five out of seven. That's a, good, that's a good score. Over 300 of these, we've seen some very bad stuff. And we've seen some pretty good stuff. So it, it is nice to go into it with an open mind. And then we have all of the shows that we've seen to grade this against, where this is you kind of going into it fresh and maybe not have, have seen a lot of failed Not pilots. been tainted by yeah. our experience. I'm, I'm very anxious to hear the scores. Captain Philip, rest assured, I turn towards you. How do you rate Adventures of the Carter? I am giving this a bump. Oh, you didn't mention that during the, the Did not. Plot. It's a surprise bump. It's a Roxy bump, because Roxy was adorable. Oh! And I want her to be my secretary. Okay. So I'm going to give it, with a bump, I'm going to give it a six out of seven. Wow. I enjoyed this. I had a good time with it. Uh, I put myself in 1972. In your mind. In my mind. And uh, Roxy was. I wish you. I. I knew there was going to be. If this continued, she'd be more and more in it. She was in it just enough, you know. But uh, I, I liked it. it. It was a mystery. It was a, a murder mystery, and it. it I liked it. And I, with the with the bump, I give it a six. How do you rate? What did you? Uh, what would you have uh, Roxy do if she was your Roxy? secretary? Roxy, huh? I would just have her like go on some of the the stakeouts and to, you know have her hold the money. Oh, I, I okay. So in this scenario, you are a private detective. I'm, no, I'm a private dick. Yeah, but but do you dicker uh, with her? <laughs> so okay, I'm I, Roxy dicker all I thought day. You're like. I'm Blake Clayton. No, no, no. I'm living saying, my current life. Oh, I thought you were saying. Her as I thought secretary. you were saying on the show. What would you want her to see her? her no, her. no. I, I want to know what Blake Clayton because you said I want her to be my secretary, well, and I'm thinking what would Blake Clayton need, uh, need a secretary for? Well, see, I would get those pieces of paper down here when they need to be. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I would have. I she would. I would have her dictate mm-hmm. a list of the characters and um, said numbers for the the, the um, smart grading scale. Okay, all right, yeah. there you go. I got some other things, but I don't really think we should talk about that. Maybe, maybe it would have went to series if they had more of her in there. Nice. I like the way you think, Joe. I don't I don't want to see, like, if this had continued, I don't think I want to see uh, Nick and Roxy get together. No. And, no. And, and no, I tell you why, wouldn't. because Nick needs to be out there, kind of James Bond, pounding yeah. some random ass, right? Yeah. We want to see him hook up with, like, the lady of the week, right. like, like every like second, Flo. Or... like he's going to eventually have oh, to go yeah. back and do yeah. it. Flow. I, I think yeah. they, the way they had a conversation while they were sitting at the table, they There's probably history. they probably dickered a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but they, they but you really thought you were going to see much more of Roxy from the intro of the movie, right? Because the, the intro show. it panned she on was, her. She the was whole on there time. for the whole walk, stroll through this yeah. through the downtown. You definitely would have got a lot more Roxy yeah. if it had continued. I expect but, her to be the star of the show there for a little while. Yeah. I, I didn't know what to expect either coming into it. But I will say, I'm going to agree. And, I, you know, to a degree, I think I'm agreeing with you, Blake, minus the bump. But I'm agreeing with Joe wholeheartedly. I'm going to give this a five as well. Nice. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I, I, there's some fun action Aligned. In it. Aligned. That's a perfectly aligned. A um, couple more weeks, and our periods will align as well. That's right. We'll all sync up <laughs> like men do. Um, yeah, it was, it was fun. It, the period piece was cool. Sometimes you think... You know, if if you're in that time frame, it's it's kind of 
stuffy or it, yeah, it wasn't stuffy at all. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I enjoyed it. I thought uh, Conrad did a great job as Nick Carter. I give it a five, and you get and Joe, you give it a five, and you give it a six, Blake. And with that, we close the book. Sounds like highly recommended. It yeah. sounds like it. We'll close the book though on the adventures of Nick Carter, and we'll never speak of that show again. <laughs> yeah. But join us next time, won't you, please? When we watch the pilot episode of The Aliens Are Coming. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. An alien mothership hovering in Earth's atmosphere is the base for an attempted alien invasion of Earth. You can find the entire episode of The Aliens Are Coming by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, Blake. You know what to do, Tube. <sighs> good job. Thanks. Good job to you. And, and hey, good job to you. No. Oh, good job to well, you. Yeah, I think you're doing a great job. Good job to you. Thanks. I appreciate it. You guys did all right. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Joe. Joe. <laughs> Coming from someone who's heard every episode. Um, look, uh, go to couchpilotspodcast.com. It's a real website. We take up virtual real estate with mm-hmm. that website. Yep, it's right. kind of like Bitcoin for the internet. But the difference is we don't get money for the website. We pay money. That's for right. It. But other than that, it's exactly like a Bitcoin. It's causing a, a, a financial deficit for both of us. But, hey, that's okay because that website contains not only all of our uh, podcasts that we've done for the past uh, six and a half, seven years, but it also has uh, ways to contact us via Facebook or Twitter. Um, I'm not going to mention Instagram because you don't do anything with that. And then um, <laughs> but there's also a phone number that is – you haven't done anything with the phone number either, have you? No, I have uh, you got to get that secretary. I need a secretary. <laughs> Joe, I've got a Roxy lot of stuff. here. She comes. Yeah, Joe, I've got a lot of stuff I haven't gotten done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He declares he's going to do it. Like, no one asks him to do it. All seven years? Well, it's about, yeah, <laughs> about. So Blake will announce, I'm going to do this thing. And I, I'm just like, yeah, right. And then I check up on him later. Did you do that thing? He's like, no. I was like, well, no one fucking asked you to do it. <laughs> he's got you to stop promising. you got to stop saying you're going to do stuff. I know. Because no, no one's like, Blake, will you do this for us? Oh, yeah. Nobody, yeah. yeah. Nobody ever says that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, go to Patreon.com. It's a website where you can enter in your credit card, and then money from your card will come from the card to us, and we get that money. Right. That's how I understand that to work. Yes. All right. That works. That, that works fine. I got that thing up and running, although I was going to change it up, and I never did. Joe, how's your credit score? Is it good? No comment. Yeah, okay. That's good. Joe, good good you, answer, uh, Joe. <laughs> that is a good yeah, Keep the IRS off your ass. <laughs> yeah. um, hey. I, I put out more than I put in. Joe, you're not the Joe I expected today. <laughs> But 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 God damn I completely it, forgot about Joe. But God damn it, you're the Joe that I wanted. Okay? Because the other Joe, he was just like tagging along with Wayne. He was a nice guy. I think he had serviced our country in some fashion in the military. He was in Wayne's World. He was in Wayne's World 1 and 2. Schwing. Am I right, guys? Schwing. But how about how about this Joe? Joe did a great job. What a, what a great uh, Joe we ended up with today. Joe, did you have a good time? Like, you can be honest. I did. I did. I... I Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> that is Can, always the answer. Will you guys get me out of the straight jacket now? Nope. Well. Not, it's not not until we push stop. <laughs> yeah, we gotta hit the. No, stop I actually had a good time. I would. I didn't know what to expect here, and uh, I'll be honest. I was a little bit nervous of what the commentary would be. I thought, uh, I like I said before, I thought you guys will really want me to know a lot about the no, show, no, and no. I just watched the show. But uh, I, I feel like I I followed along well. It's, yeah, you no, have what you did. Like and, you have a great understanding and, of the show, and, yeah. and I could visualize the the show as you guys went through it. Um, but uh, no, I had, a, I had a good time. Enjoyed enjoyed the hell out of this. Good, it was a good time. I'm glad you. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you had a good time. That is the only prerequisite we have. You don't have to listen to the show. You don't have to come in with notes. It'd be nice if you brought us a nice apple pie. But what <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, the only thing we ask is that you watch the pilot, and you did. And uh, again, it sounds like you had a great understanding of it, and we're really glad to have had you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate. I appreciate the offer. This is the uh, this is a season where Blake, you have said I am not going to have a segment at the end of the show to talk about something that you're interested in or some message that you want uh, to put out there. Right, because I want people to take the time mm-hmm. to um, get in touch with the show and you know um, interact with the show. We have uh, some fan feedback next week. Right? We have fan feedback next week, and it's been it's been a while. Um, but we used to have a lot of uh, interactions, and we we're just I'm I'm giving my time up. I'm. I am giving my time up on the floor for those people to take the time to send us an email, dial the dial in numbers. Well, let me ask you this. You, you had recently sent me a couple of emails yeah. that, that contained a lot of fan feedback. Yeah. And you've never done that before. No. What? Why did you do that? Because uh, my OCD uh, recently <laughs> has decided that I have like 
four different email accounts that I need to start going through. Okay. And this all this all the stuff from the the Couch Pilots one. Yeah. Was in our social like folder instead of the primary folder. Okay. And I didn't notice them. Okay. So you noticed that, and now you're starting, so I was cleaning them and up. Now you're starting to forward it to me, so I, so I can add it to be a part of the show. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't under, I've never had them before, so I was under. I was trying to understand where that came from. Yeah, and, and you you messaged me about that last night, but I was already in my slumber. I had no idea what I was getting, and I messaged you, and then I, I think and then I, I did it again, and then I did it again did today. It again today, that's right. All right. Um, this pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Joe, thank you very much, buddy. I'll thank you, a good time. Joe. Thank you.